So our objective today is to understand the algebraic, so that means with letters, um, representations, oh, represents, representations, hello, of transformations. So that's what we're going to focus in on. We, again, we've talked about them for the first two, but we, and we kind of talked about it yesterday, but I want to get it in hard fact everything. Sydney? Are you tripping on Okay. Right now it looks like we're taking notes. So let's talk about a translation. Oops, if I can spell correctly today. Okay. So translations, you start with an ordered pair. And so when we talk about algebraically, we're not going to actually have physical numbers in there. We're just going to use uh, variables to represent rules. And we have different combinations that can occur. So I'm not going to write four different, because there's actually four different combinations we could have. And I'm not going to write them all out. I'm just going to write one generic one and then talk about it. If we're going to move uh, an object and we want it to move an x value, we're going to take that x value and we're going to say it's a, and we're going to add it. Now, we're going to talk about how a could be positive or negative. Okay, so that's going to explain what the actual physical move is going to happen. And then we had talked about with the y value, we're going to add some sort of b value. So let's kind of break down what could happen. A. A could be a positive A if the directions tell you to move where? Right. Or right. Okay. So this would give you move right A places. But if we get a negative A, what is that going to tell you to do? It's going to tell you to move the other direction, move left, A places. Now, with some translations, that's all it was. It was just moving right or left. That's all they wanted you to do, okay? Some translations wanted you to move only up or down, and that's the B value. So if it was a positive B value, what direction did you move? Okay. We can't go right in two different letters. We can only go one direction. So we're going to move up because it's positive. B places. And if it was a negative B, you would move down that many places. So again, when we were doing our translations, we either didn't just an X shift, like from quadrant one to quadrant two, or we did a Y shift, so let's say, um, sorry, I did that wrong. If we did an X shift, we would do quadrant one to quadrant four. If we did a Y shift, we would do quadrant one to quadrant two. And then there were times where we did both an X shift and a Y shift, so like quadrant one to quadrant three. So that would be a diagonal shift of some sort, okay? So you could do it individually, you could do it in combination, okay? And so we had all those different scenarios. Um, and where, let me add this back in here. You guys have got the packet you can get into the online book. So I attached to your packet lesson 9.4. So there's an example of this. Okay, so you can look through the examples yourself. And also with each of the examples, if you look here at the Your Turn and you're online, you can go to a personal math trainer. And so that's really good. Okay. Then let's talk about rotation, or not rotations, let's talk about reflections. So reflections um, you had different sorts of movement, but it was always over an axis. Now you can reflect over any line you want. 
You could reflect over the line x equals 1. You could reflect over the line y equals 2. It doesn't matter. But we're only focusing in on reflecting um, about an axis. Okay? Caitlin, wake up, sweet. Okay. So, we had two types of reflections, right? We could reflect over the y-axis or we could reflect over the x-axis. So, let's deal with each one. So, reflect over x-axis. So, let's draw a quick picture without my fancy stuff. So, if I'm reflecting over the x-axis, I'm doing this. Okay. And what I would start with is my original ordered pair. But what would I do, what would change in that reflection? Look where your x's are and look where your y's are. And what is the actual change with those ordered pairs? Ryan, you remember? Okay, so in this one, who becomes the negative? The x or the y? Okay, so when you reflect over the x-axis, you now have negative, oops, sorry, that wasn't the color I wanted, sorry. Yep, it's supposed to be erasing. Now we could do that. You have a negative y. So you're going to multiply... the y by negative 1. The x value will stay exactly the same. It's the y value that's going to change. Because you can see in that picture, you go from quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, your y's are negative. So you have a positive x and you have a negative y. Quadrant 1, you had positive, positive. So it doesn't matter where your shape is. Anytime you're reflecting over the x-axis, your x is fine. It's your y that changes to the opposite sign. Okay? So then the other option would be to reflect over the y-axis. So again, here's your original point. So let's say that we're going to reflect over the y-axis on this one. Okay? And now what's going to change on this shape? Okay, what's going to change on this shape? I only have one answer man today, right? Um, the x will be negative and the y will be positive. Yeah, what happens is now I'm still at the same level as the other shape, so the y hasn't changed, but what has changed is my x value. So we're going to, in any time we're told to reflect over the y-axis, we're going to multiply, oh man, the, sorry, the x by negative 1, okay? So I can mathematically already know what my ordered pairs will be, and that'll help me get where I need to go. Boy, we got two sleepy girls right there. Wake up there, Samantha. Oh, my goodness, the two of you together. Woohoo! Okay. And again, in your packet, you can look at the example of that. Here comes the fun one. Rotations. Oh, I'm sorry. So now let's talk about rotations. Oops. And with rotations, what it boils down to is what direction are you heading? Okay. If you're, ro if you're going clockwise, we have one thing that changes. If we're going counterclockwise, it's another thing that changes. So it's the, the direction that you're heading that's really going to determine how we're going to mathematically change. So let's deal with clockwise first. And we'll just deal with 90 degrees clockwise. So clockwise is to the right. What happens is that you're going to take your ordered pair and two changes take place. Change number one, we're going 
to the right. So we're going to take our x value, and you're going to multiply by 1, or negative 1, sorry. Second thing that's going to change is you're going to switch x and y. So what we end up with is we're going to take the x value and multiply it by negative 1. He shows up over here as negative x. y comes in front. So the y, original y coordinate, listen up, Connor, becomes the x coordinate in the rotation. Okay? And the original x coordinate gets a negative times it, and then it becomes the y coordinate. That's the weird piece. All right? Let's go the other direction. 90 per degrees counterclockwise. Now, again, all of these we're going to counterclockwise. We're going to be using the origin as our rotation point. So again, we're going to start with this ordered pair. What do you think we're going to multiply by negative 1? We're going to multiply the y by negative 1. And we're still going to do the switching. Switch x and y. So this, when I rotate it counterclockwise to the left, we're going to multiply the y by negative 1, and it now becomes the x value, and the old x value becomes the new y value. Okay. Now, the other one is the 180 degrees rotation. So what do you think happens with the signs then? Think back to our homework. When we go from here to here, what's going to happen to these values versus these values? What's happening to your x's and y's versus these x's and y's? Okay. Okay, so both of them become negative. We multiply by negative. We're going to apply both of those rules, and then they stay in the same position. So we're going to multiply both x and y by negative 1. No switching. Because if you think about it, if we've already made a comment that this is a double reflection, never in a reflection did x and y coordinates change spots, right? So this one says if you start with the ordered pair x, y, what you're now going to have is negative x, negative y. So the next last little piece that goes on with this, I'll hold on a second. So let's talk about 270. So I'm going to give you a relationship with 270. So if you're asked to do a 270 degree rotation that's clockwise, that's the same as a 90 degrees counterclockwise. Oops. Which? Why? So you don't have to know something special for 270. You don't have to go 90 and 90 and 90. You can go, oh, you could do 180 and then you could do a 90. Or you could just do 90 the opposite direction. So the same thing would be true if we went the other way. If it was a 270 degree rotation clockwise, oh, sorry, counterclockwise, oh. that's going to be a 90 degrees clockwise. So you have that chart that you can use for that. Okay, and then 360, we could add that in there. Shh. 
whatever your original ordered pair is, it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. And you're going to apply these rules to each of the vertices, okay? All right, so those are the rules I have for you.